So the FSRH guidelines on the contraceptive implant, I have done a little summary of this. As I said, um, I did all these summaries to help help me with uh, MRCOG part two revision. And I'm sharing um, these slides with you um, in the comprehensive format. So hopefully it'll save you um, from having to um, make really detailed notes and summary. So um, the contraceptive implant is inserted subdermally in the inner upper arm. It releases progestogen etonogestrel. It suppresses ovulation. Um, it also has benefits on the endometrium. It can make it uh, quite thin and inactive and hence incapable of holding a pregnancy. It also um, has effects on the cervical mucus where it um, changes it in a way that it would make um, it, um, uh, you know, un less likely for the sperm to um, be able to swim um, and get through to the egg. So it's uh, normally placed on days one to five of the men's menstrual cycle or day five after abortion or day 21 after childbirth. There's no increased risk of uh, VTE, which is venous thromboembolism. There's no significant increase in risk of breast cancer. The rate of ectopic pregnancy is 0.2 per 100,000. The failure rate is only 0.05%. So it's overall a very safe and effective method of contraception. Um, individuals who are use the enzyme-inducing drugs should be aware that um, it reduces the effectiveness of the implant, um, not only when it's being used, but also the after, even after 20 day, 28 days of stopping the enzyme inducer. The contraceptive effectiveness of the implant is unaffected by the body weight or um, the BMI. Some side effects like acne, depression, weight gain, um, there's also um, irregular bleeding, um, which I will talk to you on my next slide about how this can be um, controlled or made better for the patient. Um, there's also some rare complications where this implant could uh, rarely be inserted into a um, vascular space uh, or into a, it can migrate into the muscle or the bones, which could complicate its removal. So a three month trial of additional um, uh, combined oral contraceptive pill um, can be given to help symptoms of irregular bleeding um, or a five day course of um, mephanemic acid to help with um, symptoms of irregular, unpredictable bleeding. Now, the release rate of uh, this implant gradually um, decreases over time. Um, so from being 60 to 70 micrograms per day in weeks five to six to only 35 to 45, so that's nearly half, per day at the end of the first year. And then only 25 to 30 micrograms per day at the end of third year. So that's 60 to 70 from the start to 35 to 45 at the end of first year to then 25 to 30 at the end of third year. Breast cancer, arterial thromboembolism, decompensated cirrhosis, hepatocellular tumours and unexplained vaginal bleeding are UK MEC3 or UK MEC4 conditions for the implant. Well, I hope you found this video useful and if you did, then please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section if you do want me to record uh, more videos on other um, contraceptive methods um, by summarising the FSRH guideline in um, the hope that this will benefit you for your exams.